Welcome back. You're live with me, Samantha Simmons. The Chinese government is fighting to curb the spread of the coronavirus. More than 100 people have now died in China, with confirmed infections surging to more than 4,500. Despite this, the virus wasn't always a top story in Chinese media. But in the past 24 hours, the language has escalated in what looks like an acknowledgement of the severity of the crisis, with the state-owned Chinese People's Daily flagging an increasing concern for children and calling the situation a pandemic. Well, I'm joined now by the BBC's China media analyst, Kerry Allen. Kerry, welcome to you. I mean, it's a global story. How much access in China are people getting to the information they need? Quite a lot, actually. Um, there are media that are actually on the ground in Wuhan. The, uh, the official Changjiang Daily um, is putting out video streams constantly showing how streets are empty, for example. Um, there have been, I mean, one newspaper, the paper, has been going and interviewing people at train stations um, early in the week, um, asking them about their travel arrangements because they were then suspended with the lockdown. Um, and also, if they're not based within Hubei, which is where this all started, but all around they can constantly read updates i mean just looking at official media news streams there are updates constantly by province or municipality telling people exactly what they need to know about delays restrictions right. etc in their region so people are being informed how is it affecting daily life which clearly isn't going on in any way shape or form of normality can people aren't going to work in the restricted areas kids can't get to school very much so. I mean, I've been talking to friends in Shanghai uh, where businesses have been suspended for at least two weeks. Schools have been suspended at least three weeks. Um, so, uh, so everybody's stuck inside. And the Spring Festival holiday that's normally about a week um, where people have, I mean, all over the country, they all have this time off as a, as a public holiday. Um, this has been extended by a week. So, um, so people are being told, do not go outside, spend time with your family. And if you absolutely have to get somewhere, you must buy a mask. What about access to food and supplies? This has been difficult. In fact, uh, one of the things I've seen uh, this morning, for example, um, Shandong province in the east is, um, is donating, well, not donating, is sending um, hundreds of tonnes worth of vegetables and produce into Hubei, which is in lockdown. Um, a number of cities in the region have been having food problems and su local supermarkets, for example, they've been dropping their prices um, to, to cope with demands. And, uh, and we've seen official media saying that people are not starving in the region, mm. um, but, um, but at the same time, they are having to make sacrifices. So, so yeah, there, there were video there was video footage, for example, of people stockpiling last week, um, but now there's more food coming into the region. What about attempts to try and get on top of this as far as the authorities are concerned medically? We know that they're trying to build a hospital in a matter of days, aren't they, in Wuhan? Yeah, two hospitals, in fact. Um, I mean, one of these is, is going to be 25,000 square metres. Um, it's going to be built by the 3rd of February, and uh, people can actually watch on a live stream this hospital being built. Um, it's going to have a 1,000 more extra beds, and medical professionals from the north of China where there are not that many cases so in areas like Xinjiang and Inner Mongolia they're sending teams of more than 100 medical professionals into Hubei to help because that's the main area where there's over a thousand cases. Okay Kerry thank you very much for the update.